everybody, it's Kim the Crafty Nomad, and I am back with another episode of Square It Up Saturday. This is the series where we, uh, I share with you all of my, or I share with you the progress on my modular blanket projects. And as I have said before, these are any blankets that I'm doing that we make, that I make smaller parts for, be it squares, strips, rectangles, um, circles, whatever it is, uh, and then sew them to get hexes, uh, and then sew them together to become a blanket. So, you know, I have other projects. I have other blankets on the go, and um, I just finished one, and that was not presented here because it was a C to C. So, these are you know, squares, rectangles, strips, like I said. So I know you get it. Anyway, uh, I am working on several in that genre. And um, every week I don't have progress on every one. But um, I try to have some type of progress on at least one or two of them. And so today, um, I don't have Ivy Cottage with me. Uh, I do have three others to show you today but I just realized that one of them I um didn't bring within my uh reach so hold on one second okay so I am going to show you today I didn't bring Ivy Cottage I do have a progress on the Christmas blanket I have a little bit of progress on the uh, memory blanket, which is the black and white one. And then the most recent blanket yarn blanket that I started, uh, which is Mile a Minute. So let's go ahead, since Mile a Minute is right here, and I know this is going to shake the phone. Um, let me show you. Uh, Mile a Minute, uh, this one is called, uh, let me show you, it's called French Braid. Is found in this book that we all flipped through recently. And um, it's the very first one. And it's this one. So they are holding together, as I have shared, Lion Brand Chunky USA Bulky Weight Yarn. They're holding two strands of two different colors together. But in this one, the colors are all neutral. And very well done. So I like the idea of this. I like the texture of it. And um, they use a Q hook. I am using a P hook. And I am not holding two strands together. So mine is going to be smaller. This one, if I had done this one, this would be 40. If I had done it exactly the way that they're doing it, it would be 42 inches by 65 inches. But I don't know. We'll have to see what mine measures out to when I get to it. So I'm using Bernat uh, Blanket Confetti in the colorway Frosted Blue Confetti. And then this one is uh, Lion Brand Bl Blanket Yarn, which is uh, uh, Wispy White is the colorway, and it's the tie-dye uh, line. Okay, and so last time we met... I had uh, two strips completed, uh, but no ends were woven in. And so now I just wanted to show you that I wove the ends in on uh, the two that were already made. So that's one of the two. And then here is the other one of the two with ends woven in. And they seem like they are just a tad longer than a, um, I need to measure them. But all right, let me see if I have, yeah, I might have a tape measure here. We'll try it. So those two got their ends woven in. And then I had already started the third strip last time we talked, I believe. Maybe, but I had to rip it out because uh, it wasn't right. Uh, the numbers weren't working out right, so I started again. And so all I have right now on the third one is the center strip. And let me reach down here and just check and see if I have a me tape measure. And I'll go ahead and measure this uh, for you guys. I'm just going to put that right there. I got my little Grinch Notions pouch that has 
a million different things in it. So let's see. Well, yep, we do have a tape measure in it. And let's see if we can get an idea on how long. And this is before being joined uh, and before any kind of... Uh, <laughs> I'm not in a good spot to be measuring, but we're going to try it. So it is... We can honestly, I mean, it's not short. <laughs> it is currently at the point, it's about 54 inches long. So it's not even five feet long, but still, it's not even joined together yet. It doesn't have a border yet. So it's going to be a decent size um, blanket, I think. So yeah, they are 53 or 54 inches long already, each strip. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be pretty decent. So it is going pretty fast. The name of the book is Quick to Stitch uh, Afghans and... Uh, I do think, I mean, if I had only worked on this, it would be really, at least all the strips would be done. But because I have other goals, I don't just work on, <laughs> and because of who I am, I don't just work on one thing. <laughs> I have tons of things happening. Okay, so the next uh, blanket that I want to show you is the, sorry, I'm leaning out. To pick this up, this is the Christmas blanket, and you guys know that I've been using a pattern from Daisy Farm Crafts, and it was a, it was really a, um, for a hot pad, but I decided that I could use that square and make it into sort of a modern, um, kind of a holiday Christmas blanket with a uh, vintage type of color. So I am using a Hershner's Worsted 8 in the colorway. I think this one is Cranberry. That's what I have left of that first ball. Or it's actually the, the first ball is this one. And this was a frog square from the Pineapple Afghan that I did not complete. And then um, this is all that's left of the sandstone, the first ball. And then, uh, finally, I have, uh, what is this? Dark Moss. Okay, so that is the colors. And I, of course, already had, I think I had 11 last week. Look, let me see. And I'm doing a variety of these squares. Some of them will be uh, Dark Moss and um, the Sandstone with the Christmas tree. And some of them will be the cranberry and the sandstone with the Christmas tree. And keep in mind, none of these have been blocked. And I probably won't block them. I'll just sew them together and see how that goes. <laughs> and then we've done some solid ones. So there are going to be a number of solid green ones. I mean, solid cranberry ones. And a number of solid um, dark moss. So that's four five six seven eight nine i see this one just seems bigger than the rest i mean it really does 10 11 i had the last i showed it to you and i just made one more so i'm up to 12 now my goal is to try and get to and they these are so they will remain wonky until they get sewn together and then we'll get some of that wonk out. <laughs> but I think just, I don't know. This one just is bigger. And I think, I mean, I've, I've been using the same hook. So I feel like maybe I should have gone another. I would, If I have to add another round of uh, just to get them all the same size, because uh, that one is definitely big. And then the rest of them are big. So I guess it's my my gauge as well uh, changes. But anyway, I just added one more solid. So my goal for this month is to try and make um, so three three a month, which means that I should have been at twelve at the end. Of, you know, if I stay on my goal. But you know, honestly, I'm trying to get it done by October so I can actually sew it together and have it for Christmas. So 
so I got some leeway in there, but, um, but anyway, so, you know, we're going to take it easy on ourselves. I'm not hard and fast, but I didn't do very much at all in April. And so if I had, I would have 12 and then this month I would be heading to 15. So I'm at 12 and I decided that what I'm going to do is just make the solid ones because they work up quicker because I'm not changing any colors. So that's what I think I will do. I'm probably going to make, uh, you know, the, the, la the next three will all be solid and hopefully get those done by the end of the month. And then I'll be all uh, sort of caught up in where I want to be on these. So that's that for this blanket. But there, it's coming along coming along um i'll put that away nicely in a minute sorry i'm out of the frame and then the other one that um i am working on is the um memory blanket and this is from louise crochet and she is on instagram this is a blanket that she put together throughout all of last year and then offered the pattern up for anybody who would email her and i did so everything is being made with Red Heart Super Saver in the colorway black and in the colorway white. So we're keeping it simple. And I'm using my, um, just to keep it in the in the same color family, I'm using my furls uh, hook. And this is in, this is a five millimeter or an H. So this is my furls. And I think this was called Ebony. This, this particular, the, the dark, um, just black wood. And this is definitely one of the wooden streamlines. Okay, so that is what I'm using. And actually, I think, yeah, this is white, white. I, I really tried hard to do white, white for this one. So, uh, so it's one square a month. The first square we did was this one for January. And then for February... And then finally for March, let me get you to write that, okay. That's March. So again, I didn't do a whole lot in April. I did start the April square in April, but I did not do very much on it. And I've just done, now this is a mosaic square. I'll try to, she didn't really have a picture of the entire one. Um, but this is a mosaic square, mosaic double crochet is what we're using. And this is one pattern repeat. I have to do this five times and then two more rows and then we'll do a border and we'll be done with that one. But it's coming along exactly. It's looking like it's supposed to. So, yep, this one takes a lot of concentration for me. Um, not finding the rhythm yet because every row from this is eight rows. This is eight rows, and I gotta do it five times. And every row is different for the most part, <laughs> so uh, you really have to concentrate. So, this is slow going, but I'm really gonna try and get this one done before the month is over. Uh, so then I will, I can go ahead and do the May one which I hope is easier, and then um, I haven't looked ahead, and then uh, I'll get in there and do the June one. All right, so that's that for that, and those that's the progress. That's where I stand on those, and now we're going to reach up the camera and do a little flip through of this book that I showed you I got uh, from Annie's. We'll do a little flip through of that, okay? Get you inspired for uh, Christmas in July. Uh, the pattern that we're going to be working on um, for Christmas in July will be a make-along. And we are doing the Christmas Spirit Gnome. I'll try to pop a picture in of that gnome and of the magazine that we're working from. So if you want to get uh, in on this make-along, it starts on July 1st. We are not starting ahead of time, but you can be picking out the yarns and making sure you have the pattern. And the pattern, um, I think it's called A Very Crochet Christmas, and it's from Crochet World, I think. 
anyway i'll pop a picture in so you can see it and then um go ahead and get it and it still has it last i looked it was 6.99 if you have a uh, amazon account or a kindle unlimited account you can also get it on there you can borrow it like you're borrowing from a library but you have to have kindle unlimited anyway i think um we're gonna set the camera up so you can now um we can go through this book together all right all right, guys, here we go. Uh, this is a Merry... Oh, this one is a Merry Crochet Christmas. Um, so, I'm not sure what that other one is called, but I'll... <laughs> I'll go ahead and pop a picture in anyway. Um, but anyway, uh, a Merry Crochet Christmas. Um, I don't know. Let me see. 20 plus projects for the holidays. So here's your table of contents. I already see, I've seen a lot in this book that reminds me of different folks in the um, the community. So let's get started with um, I'm trying to figure out, okay, here we go. Just put my hand over it. And uh, if you can see, I'll try to bring that up. Now to me, this is not necessarily something that I would actually wear except for fun at Christmas. So I think it's really relevant. I mean, when you look at it, if you have an ugly Christmas sweater party, this would be a great addition. Or just a fun Christmas party, uh, say, you know, or even for a Christmas show at a school like i see a teacher wearing this on a fun for a fun holiday show day or a fun party a holiday party day so it's got a um ornament here and then an elf here and the rest is just granny just a lot of granny stripes i think so that one is interesting um I, i'll go back possibly to okay so this one reminds me, I believe, is Linda Hendren, uh, because I think she's the one that has done some of these uh, fillet um, crochet pieces. I believe it's Linda Hendren. Um, but yeah, that I love. I would never do it, but this totally reminded me of uh, Linda. So I think, and you know, all of us are so diverse. The fact that they have something for ever that I think everybody would love um, is pretty. It's a pretty good book. So this one is called the Snowdrift Blanket, which is super pretty. Um, really love it. They are using a number four, and for this one, they used uh, Premier Yarns Everyday Worsted. So if you wanted to just, you know, create some small gifts and practice a little bit of color work, um, that one exists for you using a number four. And they, you, they made it with cotton. I can see you doing that. But really cute Christmas cheer mug rugs. Now, here we go. This one totally, of course, reminds me of Stephanie because she did this one. or She's been working on this or she finished it, I can't remember. But let it snow, Stephanie definitely did this one. So that reminds me of Stephanie from Stephanie's Yarnscape. So far, there's two people. This also reminds me, these are rustic gnome ornaments. They're supposed to be eight inches tall. That's a big ornament. But... Totally reminds me of Stephanie from Stephanie's Yarn Escape because she's way into gnomes these days. She's actually using her um, her Centro to make a lot of her gnomes, but I love that. And I'm actually also been making a lot of gnomes. Of I did a bunch of gnomes for uh, hashtag uh, uh, Spring Yarn YouTube Hop. So um, this will be on my list to make. Those reminded me of Stephanie. These remind me of Bev from Dittmer's Dittmer Knittery because 
Uh, she has a bunch of old classic uh, that she shared on her channel. Some uh, vintage uh, things that she made. Not, not necessarily vintage, but very old. And she made them herself. And this reminds me of her. These delicate little... Um, delicate little um snowflakes very pretty now they use a zero a lace a size 10 crochet cotton for those and i am sure oh yeah and they use fabric stiffener yep totally reminds me of something that bev showed and then i think again this is reminding me of stephanie but look at this gnome pillow He's so cute. I just love him. He's made with Premier Basics, Medium, and then Premier uh, Yarns Aspen Bulky. The white part is a bulky. So you could use um, a velvet yarn, or a, which is what I would do. I'm really thinking of making this guy um, at some point. And this one, this reminds me of Angelia. Uh, from Crochet and House Mouse. She absolutely loves the red pickup truck. Now, I know it's not a pickup truck, but, you know, they have a lot of the red pickup trucks with the little Christmas tree on top. They have lots of those decorations available. Driving home for Christmas ornaments. <laughs> so cute. I really like it. Now, let me see if there's anything else I want to show you from this book. Uh, I wish that I had this. I, I guys, I know I, I said today on my live that I'm terrible at graph gans, but I would love to tackle this pillow. I mean, it's small enough that you would think I would be able to probably pull that off. It looks like it has uh, maybe about five different colors in the graph gan, and then all of the snow. I'm hoping that that's just embroidered on and, and not, uh, and all the decorations on the trees and not actual little stitches. But anyway, I just think it's so cute. Let me have a look. Uh, what are they using? Medium length, uh, medium, medium width, um, I'm sorry, medium weight. And... No, those are stitches. <laughs> I'm looking at the color work chart, and those are stitches. I mean, I think I would just sew those on. But yeah, the color work chart is really showing them as stitches. So, but I still think I want to try it. Now, this would not be hard to do at all. Can you see that? Can you see that wall hanging? That would be easy to do. With a number five bulky. Super easy. Just a bunch of popcorns, I think, to make the tree. But this one is another opportunity for color work that, you know, doesn't look that intimidating. But it's super cute. Look at that. All right, and I think, let's see, is there anything? Oh, I did want to show this. I didn't show you everything, but I wanted to show you this snowy tree garland. Look at that. I think that's really pretty. And you can make that as long or as short as you want to. I really like that. And it seems like easy, even though it's like two colors and I might have to change that part. <laughs> so I wouldn't have to be weaving in ends, but maybe you can just carry it up and you won't have to weave in ends. And it seems like, oh, is this Tunisian? What is this? It's interesting. No, it's not Tunisian, but they're doing some kind of technique. It looks like I'm, oh, it's broomstick lace. It's broomstick lace. Okay, so that's going to be interesting to try if I ever do. But anyway, there were quite a few things here. It's a view of everything in the book. I'll do it both ways because I don't know how I'm going to edit this. But yeah, really cool projects. And lots of them reminded me of lots of you.
So anyway, that's going to be it. That's going to be all for this flip through and this episode of Squared Up Saturday. I will see you in the next video. Bye.